Yes, you are most definitely dreaming in this, what we call a waking dream. But you can turn this into a lucid dream. Like in your sleeping dreams, a lucid dream is when you wake up in the dream and realize that you are dreaming. So the waking dream, you can also realize that you're dreaming. You can have a lucid dream in the waking dream, and it's actually easier than it is in your sleeping dream. There's a number of things that you can do to help you realize that, yes, in this moment, right now, always during your waking time, you are dreaming. You wake up from your sleeping dream into a waking dream. And when you become skilled at having a lucid waking dream, that's your experience. You have a sleeping dream and you wake up into your waking dream and both of them are dreams. Yes, the waking dream seems very real, seems very realistic. And there are a number of reasons why that your waking dream seems more real than your sleeping dream. One, it has a much longer duration. Your sleeping dream is maybe like five, 10 minutes for a dream, maybe 20 minutes at the longest. So they're short dreams. And also all your, the body's senses are not activated during that time. It's not the body at all. It's only your thoughts. The sleeping dream comes from your, from your unconscious mind, from your, from your thoughts. It's just your thinking. So it's limited into its experience of, of sensory experiences. Whereas in the waking dream, you have the full experience of your entire body and all its senses. You can practice this by putting on sound deadening um, earphones or earplugs so you don't hear any sound and then go through part of your day where, and not touching anything and all you're using is your sight, which is the primary way we engage with this awaking dream. And when you do that, you'll see that it's a little more dreamlike, it's not as solid. Whereas if you have your, your you know, sight and hearing and touch and smell and taste it's it's there's much more of a sensory experience so it seems much more real and that's the reason why the waking dream seems much more real than the sleeping dream it's an amazing this vehicle this body mind sensing vehicle is how we experience this waking dream this is our sort of virtual reality headset that we use to to experience the waking dream. And it's amazing. And it's so incredibly realistic. But still, even so, you can wake up in this waking dream and realize that it is a dream. And there's a number of, of things that you can do. Mostly, it's just seeing things as they really are. How you can tell that you're dreaming, there's a number of ways that you can tell it that you're dreaming. One is simply to remind yourself, this is a dream. I'm dreaming, this is a dream. So you can just do that continuously and you'll start to realize that, that this is a dream. Another way is just logic, right? Look around your room wherever you are and the objects in your room and your body and, and everything that's, that's here in the room, the room itself. This is what you see. But we know from science that your eyes are limited. They can't see the molecular structure of what you're seeing. Everything looks solid in form and, and three-dimensional real, right? But we know that actually that's not the way it is. On, the, on a molecular structure, it's mostly empty space. But you can't see that. You're seeing form, right? And you're not seeing the, the, the wave that, that creates the particles that, that create the, 
the structures of atoms and electrons and, and all of that. You can't see that with your naked eyes. They're too limited. So it's what you're seeing is not really what's there, right? You're seeing an illusion, sort of a mirage, an appearance of what's there. And for practical purposes in the dream, that's good. We, we have this body vehicle with the limited senses that's able to perceive this dream of form when it's not really like that. When you're listening to my voice, you're hearing words. You're not hearing vibration. You don't realize that really it's vibration. It's a vibration that is causing the hairs in your ear to vibrate and affect the, the inner eardrum. And then from there be interpreted by the mind as words. So you're hearing words when in fact it's just vibrations in the air. So there's a lot of things that we can know through science that things are not as they appear to be, right? So that's a dream. Things are not as they appear to be. And this body-mind vehicle that we take as what we are is also a dream. It's a dream vehicle that allows us to perceive the dream of form, the illusion of form, when it isn't really as it appears to be. So it's a wonderful thing to, to have this vehicle to be able to experience the world of form because without it, we couldn't. We would only see what really is. We would not see an illusion. We would not see appearances. We would not see a dream. We would only see things as they are. And one of the ways that we can, can perceive this can have a waking dream, be in the dream, but not of the dream, is to pull our attention back into the experiencer, into the dreamer itself. And one of the ways that we can do that is when we're seeing the dream, when we're seeing through the dream vehicle and perceiving the dream through the dream vehicle, we're using the, the surface, the, the front of our eyes, but we can actually move our attention back to the back of the eyeball and even further to the back of the skull. And when we move our attention back to the back of the skull, we're drawing our attention inward closer to the experiencer. And if we want to go further back than that, we can drop our attention further back behind the body, back to the back wall behind the body. We can bring our attention all the way back there. And then we're aware of the body, the perception, percepting vehicle that is able to perceive that we're using to perceive this as well as what it's perceiving. So all of that can be seen at once. And in this way, we're seeing that things are not as they appear to be through the body mind vehicle. It's limited. It's very limited, so it cannot see things as they are. However, when our attention pulls back, we can see things as they are. And if we pull back far enough, you, you also notice that your attention on the dream, on the sub, substance of the dream itself, form and duality and all this, starts fading as we go deeper in until we reach a point of Samadhi, in which the dream entirely disappears and the body-mind world and all of it entirely disappears. And there's just the experience of our true nature of what is. And from there, we come back to the dream again, having stepped out of the dream completely. Now, it's harder for us to experience that this dream perceiving vehicle that we're using body, mind, self, we feel is a person, we feel is a self, we feel is separate from everything else. It has its own separate, independent existence. And this is entirely not true. This is the foundation of the illusion, the foundation of the dream, the foundation of the mirage. It isn't at all like that. That's not what we are. We are perceiving through this vehicle the dream, but that's not what we are. 
it's easier to explain this through an example of something that's not this body. So I have this leaf here, what we call a leaf. It's a beautiful leaf that fell off a tree and it seems very real. I can touch it, you know, I can see it. It makes a sound when I touch it in a certain way or my fingers rub across it. And I saw this, you know, fall off a tree. And so this seems very, very real, very, very, very real, very solid, very something that is a leaf, right? And we would all call this, if I held it up to anybody that speaks the English language, and I said, this is a leaf, everybody would agree with me. But if we look closer at this, when we call it a leaf, we feel that this is independent. It's a separate, independent thing. But is it really? Is it independent of the tree that it fell off of? Could this leaf exist without that tree? Of course not. How could it? And could this tree exist without the seed that it grew from? Of course not. And would the seed grow without the earth, the fertilized earth, without rain, without the sun, it couldn't. It wouldn't exist. The tree cannot exist. This leaf cannot exist without the tree, without the earth, without the sun, without water, without the rain, without the fertilization of other leaves that have fallen and gone into the ground to create an environment that the tree can grow in. Earthworms that break up the soil to make it easier for the tree to grow. There's so many factors that go into this leaf. I mean, if we really look at this leaf closely, my teacher Thich Nhat Hanh, when we used to do walking meditation outside, would always, in, during autumn, would, would pick up a leaf and look at it for like five or 10 minutes and seeing so much in it. He could see the whole universe in it. He could see himself in it. There's nothing that is not in this leaf. If we really look carefully, there's nothing that is not in this leaf. In fact, the only thing that is not in this leaf is a separate existing entity called a leaf. That's impossible. And yet this is how we see the world. This is how we see the world and this is how we see our own body and, and, and our self. We see it as this, as a name and a form and something that's self-existing, that's independent of everything else, separate from everything else. And this is the fundamental nature of the dream, of the illusion of duality, which can never really exist. That's why it's a dream. That's why what we perceive is a dream because everything we look at, every object seems like it's a separate self-existing entity independent of everything else. When it's not, it can't be. And we are not either. So everything that we perceive in this way is a dream. And we also are a dream. We're not the dreamer. The dreamer is is what's experiencing this, experiencing this body and this mind and all this stuff in, or, in order to see and all the forms that it sees through. And although we do identify with this body mind as what we are, the dreamer, as the dreamer, we do that. Also different from our sleeping dream is in our sleeping dream, all the people that we see are a creation of our mind, are just our, our mind. There are no real people there. There's just our mind projecting an, an appearance of people or animals or whatever else we're seeing of a world. But in the waking dream, it's different because in the waking dream, there is only one dreamer. The dreamer that we are is only one. And it's dreaming all these other apparent 
people, apparent dream characters. And each of these dream characters is a different dream that the dreamer is dreaming. So through this body-mind, the dreamer is dreaming one dream. And through your body-mind, the dreamer is dreaming another dream. And everybody you see, it's a different dream that that apparent person is having. But it's all coming from the same dreamer. That's a similarity to our sleeping dream. But it's much more vast and infinitely complex than our sleeping dreams are. Because everybody we know, everybody we have a relationship, our, our parents, our children, our friends, our spouses, our lovers, these are all having separate dreams. The dreamer is having a separate dream of each one of them. But it's the same dreamer. The same dreamer as we are. This is non-duality. This is reality. There is not a separation and duality that we perceive. And in most of these dream characters, they will not have a lucid dream in this lifetime. Most of them will not have a lucid dream in this lifetime. They will very much, the dreamer will very much believe and identify as that dream character just as we did before we had lucid dreams, before we woke up to this. And that's just the way it is. There's nothing wrong with this. It's exactly as it should be. When we believed ourself, our true nature, when we believed we were not our true nature, but this dream character, this separate, individual, independent dream character, as we all did. We had suffering. We went through all the, the challenges and difficulties of this life as a dream character. It was very dramatic. There was anger and fear and jealousy and, and all human emotions. But we are not a human. We're not a separate being. We are the dreamer of all dreams, of all species. And different species have different dreams. And, and within each species, all of the different members of that species have different dreams. So it's incredibly intricate and complex how all these dreams are coming from one dreamer, which is what we are. But when we step back from the dream, when we realize it's a dream, when we awaken within the dream, when the dreamer awakens within the dream, we are the dreamer. It's not that the person, the body, mind, virtual reality headset wakes up any more than if we have a, a mechanical virtual reality headset that we put on our head. If that wakes, no, that doesn't wake up. That's just a tool that we're using. And this body, mind, person, all that, that's a tool that we're using to experience this dream and to have this dream through. The difference is that when we wake up in this dream, when we realize that it is a dream, we come back to our true nature and then the dream is a lucid dream. We realize that it is a dream while we're dreaming it. So the dream still exists. We're still dreaming it. There's still a body-mind vehicle that allows us to experience and dream this dream. But we know what we are. We know we're not that. So we're free of that attachment, that identification, and that illusion. And then the dream is a lucid dream. We realize it's a dream, but we still act in the dream, perform in the dream. Now, in, in my sleeping dreams, I still have non-lucid sleeping dreams. I have lucid sleeping dreams too, but I have an equal number of non-lucid sleeping dreams where I do believe I am the dream character and things that are going on are real in the dream to me. And that is a, is a is a wonderful teaching for me to see that this is how people are experiencing their life in the waking dream, this 
sort of very confining <laughs> in my experience, terribly uncomfortable experience of being a separate, individual, independent person, which can't exist. This limited being, you know, all the fears that come from this, the fear of death, the fear of, of you know, failure, not succeeding, and all the other things that go along with it. It's, it's very challenging. It's very struggling, as I find in my sleeping dreams. It's very unpleasant. And it's supposed to be because this is how we eventually wake up from it. If it were perfectly wonderful being in the dream, believing the dream, being the dream character, there would be no incentive to wake up from it. I mean, you know, this is good. And look how realistic it seems and how right now you're probably believing all of this to be real. And maybe you're questioning my statement that you're dreaming, that this is a dream. You might not want to accept that yet. But if you do, you can practice just reminding yourself that it's a dream. And then what is real? If this is a dream, what is real? If I am a dream, this body, mind, person, if that's a dream, then what am I really? And if you ask that question deeply enough, with enough curiosity, you will discover what you are. You'll step back deeper and deeper in, beyond thoughts, beyond the body-mind. into what's experiencing the body-mind dream character. What is experiencing this body-mind dream character? And when you experience that, you'll wake up. You'll realize that the body-mind dream character is just a dream. And everything that it perceives is a dream. And you, me, we, are not a dream. Thank you, my friend. If you're willing to, I hope you will practice this lucid dreaming within the waking dream. Just reminding yourself that it's a dream. It's all a dream. And you, the one who's perceiving it, are a dream. But there's an experiencer behind that that's using this. And when attention goes back to that experiencer, that's samadhi. That's the experience where the whole dream, the dream character, the body-mind vehicle, all of that dissolves. All of that fades away. And what's left is the luminosity, the self-effulgent luminosity, the self-realization of your true nature, of our true nature, the one dreamer of all dreams. <laughs>